So much to talk to Larry Kudlow about. Of course, Larry Kudlow, CNBC, and also host of the Larry Kudlow Show right here yeah. on WMAL Saturday, 7 p.m. And uh, hey, Larry, how are you? Thanks. Good morning. We, we've got we've got Netanyahu. We've got uh, Hillary Clinton's emails. We've got tons. Of, I want to start though. Um, with CPAC, you know, listen, you, you are, I want to call you a broken record, but no, you're more like an MP3 on an iPod that's got a glitch and keeps repeating itself. See, I updated it to yeah, the 21st century um, <laughs> about, about a pro-growth agenda from conservatives uh, moving forward to the 2016 election. Okay, so did See, any, that's a good thing. And when you say broken record, it almost sounds like a negative connotation. This is a good I mean, message. a good thing, absolutely. Yeah. But, but it's something we hear from Larry all the time. So did you hear any of the potential candidates sort of given you what you wanted, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, I heard a lot of it, actually. Um, I was on one of the panels, so I blathered on myself <laughs> about it. By the way, um, I just want to note a broken record. Some principles are universal and timeless. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So you think broken record still applies, even though, you know, most people under the age of 30 have never played a record before in their life. Yeah, I know. I read a newspaper. But, um, (laughs) you know, freedom is universal and timeless. Prosperity is universal and timeless. And I I actually thought most of them, most of the candidates had, you know, at least references to growing the economy and tax reform and um, energy reform. And Obamacare reform. So, you know, I think uh, I, I think that that it was there. Okay, in one way or another, it was there, and not specific, but it was there. I thought the really interesting thing, though, honest with you, about CPAC was there's a lot of national security. This is a national security election. Mm. Probably, you know, defense and terrorism and all the rest of it are going to be more important in this election than they have been. In quite some time, I mean, at least 10 years since 2004, but in some respects, even even 2004, that was about you know Iraq. This is about national security in general. So I think that was an important theme, and I think people that hit on that particularly well and particularly hard, um, Governor Rick Perry, Marco Rubio, were two that that really come to mind. Um, I think Senator Rand Paul was fumbling around trying to figure out a line, an argument uh, on that. And uh, Senator Ted Cruz didn't really seem to go there much. Um, I didn't like Senator Cruz's speech at all, actually, I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't care how many votes he got. I thought he was just giving one-liners out there with no substance. So national security is really a big deal, and I think you're going to see more of that. And I want to just make one editorial comment. I am not backing anybody, okay? I'm not backing anybody. I'm, I'm interviewing all of them on, on TV and radio. But I think that um, an underrated guy in this game, in, this, in the national security game particularly, but in the presidential run, is Rick Perry. Because I don't know if you realize that. Rick Perry was an Air Force uh, officer in uniform for five years. In fact, he left the Air Force as a captain and flew C-130s. Uh, all over the world, including the Middle East. He's actually the only Republican candidate with military experience. That, that is correct. That is, and that's, yeah, imp- that's and not, only, not only is that correct, I believe it's it's important, and it's going to be more and more important. So I would just you know s- score that as something to watch uh, over a period of time, and you're probably going to get down to the point because look, Marco Rubio gave a fine speech on national security. Question is, who do you want sitting across from Vladimir Putin? Okay. That's want to be a big question. Do you want a Rick Perry? Do you want a Marco Rubio? Uh, do you want others? That's a very important question. And we're going to see more and more of that. The first Republican debate is in August. Our group, uh, we're sponsoring conversations about the economy, the Committee to Unleash American Prosperity. We're not foreign policy guys. We're supply-side guys. Uh, but I think you're going to see generically a lot of national security talk. And I, and I think Perry has a big advantage there, frankly. All right. Let, let me turn to the other side of the equation. Hillary Clinton, the all-but-certain nominee for the Democrats, 
big story, New York Times and a lot of other places this morning, that, that when she was Secretary of State, she did not have or did not use, rather, a, uh, a State Department email account, that she did all of her email through a private account. And as I understand it, you, and you've worked in government, that is something that is absolutely not allowed, that there are laws that require records be kept and that uh, that you use the governmental uh, of, uh, emails for archival purposes. Well, you're right. Look, um, when I worked there, we didn't have emails, so that was, I was in Reagan's first term, and and that we didn't use that. At the time. You had broken records instead. Uh, yeah. yeah, we had broken mm. records. Yeah, but, uh, I, I'm flabbergasted at this article. All right, I was scanning it this morning, and I just don't get this. And first of all, she may be breaking a law there. I, I'm wondering. And second of all, those emails, whether they're personal or government, are out there and available. So there's going to be a hunt now for Hillary's emails, of which there will be hundreds of thousands, no doubt. And what's in them? So you're going to see, um, I mean, this is just, this is like WikiLeaks in, uh, in reverse, I guess. <laughs> we know they're there. We know it's about national security because that was her job as Secretary of State. But we don't know where they are, but they'll be found. I mean, they're in the ether zone somewhere. They're in hard drives somewhere. And I, I just cannot believe that she would be um, as as remiss, as off base as this. And I just don't get it. It's the hubris, really, to think that she could even do that as Secretary of State. Well, I, you may be right. I don't know. I, I hate to ascribe motive. I just don't understand the story. And I can't wait. She's going to have to respond today, isn't she? I mean, she's going to have to really make a response. Yeah. Every Everybody tonight uh, is going to be on this for the evening news, cable and broadcast. Everybody. Yeah. So what the hell is she going to say? And why, as you say, why did she do it? We just had Ed Henry on. I can I can tell you from the way he was talking, this is going to be a big deal on tonight's right. newscast. Right. I just, and, what, and what's in there? In other words, you, you, I presume she did this to hide something. Right. So what was she hiding? Well, and that she's already coming under attack. I mean, listen to this partisan attack on Hillary Clinton over this. Email was sent out into uh, a, a to a, basically through a private company uh, to to distribute. Uh, this is a, a stunning breach of security. That, of course, is that uh, right wing uh, frothing at the mouth. Lawrence O'Donnell, your buddy over there on right. MSNBC. I mean, right. if Lawrence O'Donnell is coming hard on this over well, there on that network. Uh, let me just say that. While we may not agree politically on some things, Lawrence O'Donnell is a friend of mine, and, a, and, he's, and he's very good at what he does. Yeah. Very, so, yes, I'm not surprised, and everybody's going to do it. Everybody's going to do it. And um, I, oh, I, I watched stunned. keenly Rachel Maddow's report yesterday, and even she couldn't find any spin on this. She, <laughs> she just played it straight, and she just reported the story, but you could tell. She, it was like she was reporting her puppy just died. I mean, <laughs> you, you saw the latest info on the Lois Lerner fiasco. Yes. Where they, you know, they found the emails. They found them. Of course, they found them. You don't. This stuff doesn't evaporate. This doesn't go to Mars. This is in the system, so to speak. So, wow. All that's right. A, that's a real. This, this is really something. And by the way, I maybe I'm the only living human being. I think she's an exceedingly weak candidate to begin with. And the fact Shh, that she has no competition. No, don't tell them that. They really think they're going to win with her. How, how they're going to. I just don't believe it. There's so many new faces on the national scene coming on the Republican side, especially these governors, and well, young and vigorous. And I, I just don't get this. I mean, really quickly, Larry, we, I, and it was only 20 seconds. We had Carly Fiorina. We spoke with her yeah. on Friday at CPAC. She's a real comer, isn't she, when she yeah. goes against Hillary? Carly did very well, by the way, at yeah. CPAC. Yeah. She made a real name for herself. And people love it that she's going directly after Hillary. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? She's likable. She is. She yeah. is. It's a, that's and, not, and not to be underestimated. All right, Larry Kudlow, always good to have you, sir. We'll talk to you next week here. Uh, thank you for joining us.